The goal of this lecture is to talk about the coronary circulation. Here we're looking at the hearts. The vessels in red are the coronary arteries, which are providing oxygen-rich blood to the myocardium. And as we've talked about previously, these coronary arteries depart the aorta at the base of the aorta, as we see here. Blood is ejected from the left ventricle into the aorta, which then proceeds to follow different paths, one of which is through the brachiocephalic artery that gives rise to the subclavian vein and carotid artery. It will also proceed into the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. All of these arteries have subbranches to them, providing blood to the arms, to the brain, neck, and a number of different regions within the thoracic cavity. This is all part of the systemic circulation. The first branch off of the aortic arch, which is this curvature of the aorta, is the brachiocephalic artery. But the very first branches off of the aorta are the coronary arteries, which are coming off the base in providing oxygen-rich blood to the myocardium. Once again, systemic circulation is perfusing the body with nutrients, oxygen, hormones, what have you. And it is super, super important that the myocardium receives a constant supply of oxygen-rich blood because we, as we have suggested, and all of you know intuitively, we never want that heart to stop. It needs to continually pump. So that's going to be the basis of this lecture. We're going to incorporate also our understanding of the semilunar valves, specifically the aortic semilunar valves, but before all that, I want to touch on briefly the cardiac veins, the coronary sinus, as it relates to returning oxygen-poor blood back to the right atrium. Here's an image of the heart. The big difference between what we see here and previous images we've looked at is we are looking at a posterior view or perspective of the hearts. Over here, we have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, certainly in previous images we've looked at, they've all been on the left. That is to say the superior and inferior vena cava have been on the left side of the hearts or the left side of the image, but that's because we've always looked at it from the anterior perspective. We are looking at it now from the posterior perspective because that's where we find the coronary sinus, which is this big blue vessel right here. This is the right atrium. And once again, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus are returning blood to the right atrium. The coronary sinus specifically is getting oxygen-poor blood from the cardiac veins, which we see in blue right here, which are taking oxygen-poor blood from the myocardium back to the coronary sinus into the right atrium. We started talking about the coronary arteries, which is what we're going to talk about the bulk of this lecture. But to be clear, Coronary arteries are providing oxygen-rich blood to the myocardium. Cardiac veins are taking oxygen-poor blood away from the myocardium towards the right atrium, first dumping that blood into the coronary sinus and then into the right atrium. And we find the coronary sinus on the posterior aspect of the heart between the atria and ventricles. This is an image we're familiar with. We've looked at it in previous videos left ventricle and aorta. Once again, left ventricle is the pump for the systemic circulation. This is the beginning or base of the aorta. Right here, we see the aortic semilunar valves. The aortic semilunar valves are formed by three cusps. You only see two of them here because I haven't drawn the third one. It takes a little more artistic skill than I have to put a third one in there. This is what we're going to look at. In short, when blood is ejected from the left ventricle, it pushes these valves up against the wall of the aorta to allow blood to flow through into the aorta. That's during ventricular systole. During ventricular diastole, when the left ventricle is relaxed, pressure in the ventricle decreases and blood attempts to flow back into the ventricle because blood is always going to flow to an area of lower pressure. We don't want blood into the moving back into the left ventricle from the aorta. So these cusps or semilunar valves will close to occlude this opening and prevent blood back into the left ventricle. 
In this image right here, in purple, I'm showing the left ventricle. It's not the entire heart. I'm just showing one chamber, and that is the left ventricle. We have the aorta leaving the left ventricle, brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery. These are the coronary arteries coming off the base of the aorta. Once again, these are not any specific coronary arteries. I'm just saying coronary arteries in general. The state the left ventricle is in right here is diastole, ventricular diastole, specifically left ventricular diastole. The left ventricle is relaxed, it is large, and it is not pumping blood. As a matter of fact, during this time, it's receiving blood from the left atrium, which would be somewhere around here. Blood from the left atrium moves into the left ventricle during left ventricular diastole. Remember when we talked about the relationship between volume of a chamber and pressure. If the volume of a chamber increases, as it does during left ventricular diastole, the pressure is going to decrease because volume and pressure have an inverse relationship when we were referring to the volume of the chamber. So as the volume of the left ventricle gets larger, pressure decreases. And it decreases to such a degree that blood from the aorta attempts to flow back into the left ventricle, which we certainly do not want. And that's the role of the semilunar valves as I've drawn in green right here. The semilunar valves are going to block or occlude the opening of the aorta back into the left ventricle, capturing this blood, preventing it from moving back into the ventricle. And during that time, as this blood backs up in the aorta, it flows into these coronary arteries, perfusing the myocardium with oxygen-rich blood. So that should be a little bit counterintuitive because during perfusion of blood throughout the great majority of the systemic circulation, which is everything but the coronary circulation, once again, coronary circulation is merely a subset of the systemic circulation, during left ventricular systole, that's contraction of the left ventricle, blood is being perfused throughout the whole body. Oxygen-rich blood is being distributed through the systemic circulation up to the brain, down to the big toe, to all the organs in the abdominal pelvic cavity. But during left ventricular systole, Blood is not being delivered to the myocardium. Blood is being delivered to the myocardium during left ventricular diastole when the left ventricle is in the relaxed state. And that's because it's backing up here and it has access to the openings of the coronary arteries. So let's just take a closer look at that. Here's the openings to the coronary arteries. Blood is backed up here, moving into these coronary arteries. If we look at this image, what I'm trying to show here is left ventricular systole, the state of the left ventricle during contraction. It is decreased in volume, and a decrease in volume of a chamber is going to increase the pressure. And once that pressure is greater than the pressure in the aorta, blood is going to be ejected from the left ventricle and perfuse throughout the systemic circulation up through the left common carotid artery, excuse me, up through the right common carotid artery, right subclavian, left common carotid artery, left subclavian, and all the arteries throughout the whole body that are branching off the thoracic aorta, abdominal aorta. Here we can see blood being distributed. There's only one organ or tissues of the systemic circulation that is not getting blood during ventricular systole, and that is the heart. As we see right here, and we're going to blow this up a little bit, the semilunar valves, when during ventricular systole, get pushed and slammed against the walls of the aorta and are now occluding the opening to the coronary artery. So blood doesn't have access to the coronary arteries during ventricular systole. The second factor that impacts blood flow to the myocardium during ventricular systole is the crimping of these coronary arteries or the 
occlusion of these coronary arteries, kind of like if you were to bend a hose. During ventricular contraction, the squeezing of the heart crimps or occludes these vessels, making their volume so small that blood can't flow through the coronary arteries to the myocardium. So blood flows through the coronary arteries to the myocardium during left ventricular diastole and does not during left ventricular systole when the rest of the body is getting perfused with oxygen-rich blood. I want to explain this in a different image. It's going to be the same concept. I'm just showing it in a different manner. This is a hard one for me to draw. It's a hard one for me to describe even in person. Really, one cannot get a full grasp of this, or let's say I never really got a full grasp of this until I actually had a human heart in my hand and I could actually see these semilunar valves and actually see the orifice through which blood flows into the coronary arteries. But what I'm showing here is the base of the aorta sliced through just the anterior wall of the aorta to splay the aorta open. And we see the three cusps of the aortic semilunar valves. And we can see on the back wall of these cusps the opening of these coronary arteries. No, I'm not saying these are any specific coronary arteries, just coronary arteries leaving the aorta. So during left ventricular diastole, during relaxation of the left ventricle, blood attempts to flow back into the ventricle, but it gets caught by these semilunar valves. And in doing so, allows blood to flow into these coronary arteries, providing oxygen-rich blood to the myocardium. This image would represent ventricular systole, where these semilunar valves are actually pushed up against the wall of the aorta. And you can't see the opening of the coronary arteries or that orifice that allows blood to flow into the coronary arteries because the valves have been pushed up against the wall and blood no longer has access to those coronary arteries. Additionally, we see these coronary arteries being crimped or bent or occluded so blood can't even flow through it even if blood was there. This is what happens during ventricular systole. So during ventricular systole, two things happen. The opening to the coronary arteries are occluded by the slamming of the semilunar valves against the wall. The second thing is the coronary arteries get bent or crimped, occluding the arteries and preventing blood flow to the myocardium. That's the coronary circulation. I know that's tough to conceptualize. It's gonna be helpful if you draw these things out. Anything in anatomy, draw things out, and it's gonna help you gain more ownership to the material.